Ladies and gents, please welcome Tony Wright and Billy Evans. How did you do that? Oh, I said I did. <laughs> Just make sure my name is mentioned. So. I'm glad he said that though, because other people are thinking, shit, I thought like Gary Stringer were tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, I've just been lazy and not had a shave. And uh, we were nearly late because that clock on that wall there still says like five to four. I thought it can't be. Right, we're going to play a few tunes. First tune sort of explains who we are and why is the way it is. One, two, three. Because I'm burned out, washed up, rock and boogie virtue. Don't stop me rocking because it's when I start to hurt. to what we're doing. This is uh, technically known as Stadium Rock. Anti-album. Yeah. 
this one, so you'll be doing all this song then. Or hopefully you will, I hope you're still playing it. Um, this song actually is the, it's actually the last part of the story, but I put it in the front like Columbo. So it like, gives you the end, you know what's going to happen, and then it like plays out to that part. Um, it was written in lockdown, obviously, you can, like I say, you can hear, you can almost taste the, uh, the tears in the cup of soup. <laughs> Pretty much a sad time for a lot of people. And then I watched the, uh, I watched that COVID inquiry this week as well. Oh, oh man, what a wanker, sorry. sorry, sorry. And then luckily, the news came on and that Kevin Sinfield was just finishing his seventh marathon and I thought, Way! Do you know what I mean? People are so different, so in the wrong place. Anyway, I was in that kind of mood and I wrote this song. One, two, three, four. Oh, 
It's, um, it's actually a true story that I've made up myself, right? About this guy and all he ever wanted in life was to be a blues musician. He didn't want me taken seriously as a blues musician. But he'd been born into a really posh, well-to-do family. So the backstory didn't sort of fit the, the music, if you know what I mean. Got up this morning, da -da 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 -da, and like, in the middle of my mansion and all that shit. So I didn't cut it. So he decided, basically, if his wife wasn't going to leave him and his dog wasn't going to die, he was going to have to be proactive. So he writes a note to his family and it says, Don't come looking for me. I've taken the car and the money from the safe. And I've gone. Don't come looking for me. You keep the houses, the pensions, the business, everything. And he sets off with the money out of the safe, because that's how posh he was, he had the safe. And he drives to Las Vegas where he pawns the car, right, and then he's just got this wad of cash and he starts to gamble and drink and gamble and drink all this money away. And it's not long till he finds himself sat in the gutter on that big strip, whatever it's called, the monk, whatever it's called. And he's sat there and he's got one dollar left out of everything from the car and the safe and everything. And just the clothes that he turned up in. And he thinks, when this dollar's gone, I will have had everything. And I'll have lost it all. I'll have nothing. I'll have nothing left except for the best backstory a blues musician could wish for. So he thinks, right, and he goes to gamble his last dollar and he puts it in the, oh, the biggest one arm bandit in Las Vegas and he pulls the arm and the wheels spin round and one by one they stop. 
and he wins the jackpot. And this song's all about how shit life is when you're lucky. <laughs> Or should we play a new one? Completely yeah, unrealistic. Why is he doing that to you? Right. I'm just thinking, yeah. right? Sometimes it's nice to like chuck out new stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So like don't be recording it and then going home and selling it to Beatles or something. <laughs> Try to make out it's a like a long lost fucking phone memo from John. I don't think we had phones then. Yeah. Do you want to do that one? Or do you want to do it? I don't know either of them, so. <laughs> you know this one the best. 
So this is a, sometimes songs just write themselves and like the words, you just hear the words and it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Where did that come from? I love it. I might have the radio on at the time, I'm not sure. But uh, this is one of them songs. I'm probably feeling sorry for me saying at the time. Sometimes it's really bad. <laughs> uh, this is going to be good, I'm being positive. Which one are we doing now? Um, oh, no. This is about, uh, this is the name of my pub that's in my head. I call it the shallow pool. And I can, I can tell you exactly what everything's like. And during lockdown, I redecorate it. <laughs> This song tells you about it. Yeah, it's filled with 
Thanks for coming out tonight. Are y'all hanging about for uh, Gary Stringer tomorrow? No. Yes. Yeah. 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 Say hello from me. So it's really weird. Since I've grown a beard, I've written a load of new songs. It's like the beard's written new songs. It's really weird because I can't see my mouth anymore. So I just hear the beard singing. I don't know whose beard it is. It can happen, can't it? Be haunted by someone else's beard. You'll never know what it's like, Millie. I don't know. I don't know.
Um, this quest, yes. but like a couple of years ago, I uh, made a New Year's resolution and I was really chuffed with myself because it's the first resolution that I've made that lasted longer than like, I don't know, 40 minutes or something. <laughs> this is good. Um, but this one, not only did it go for longer than 40 minutes, it went for longer than like 40 days. And like, I kept it going all the way through 2022. Uh, so much so that I've kept it going all the way through 2023 as well. And it's not a problem anymore, it's just part of my life and uh, I kind of welcome it. 
Um, and all it was was two years ago, I just resolved, I made a resolution to myself that every time I heard a round of applause, I was going to have a drink. <laughs> Cheers! Oh, it's the best resolution ever. <laughs> Honestly. I usually have to wait till halfway through the set to tell people. Because if they don't like my songs, they really go crazy. <laughs> and then they get, like, get me drunk really quick. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Taurus dark fruit. That's what we used to call you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, you'll encourage him. <laughs> the last thing he needs is encouragement. He's grown his beard to make his head look bigger. That's Gary Stringer! Gary Stringer's down, that look at something. <laughs> Oh God, that wasn't me, that wasn't me. I swear, my mouth was shut. Oh God, really? See, that was well bad, didn't it? I've got an abusive beard. Tune up, tell them a story, Millie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good with the, uh, yeah, yeah. With the stories and bullshit like Tony is, unfortunately. Tell them about that time. That time. That's you need that a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, I do that, I've heard my stories. We've got some, I'll tell you what I can tell you, we've got some merchandise. Roger the merch man back there. Yeah. That's his name, he says, not an instruction. Oh, no, no, he's told us to stop saying that. He said no. Oh, no, he's saying no, he's up to us. Yeah. Roger's yeah. interview, it's a new Roger the Merch Man. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you know that bit where you say Roger the Merch Man, then you say no, don't Roger the Merch Man. You don't have to say that second bit. Yeah, just keep it in the Yeah. So he's got some, uh, he's got some vinyl albums, because it's coming up to Christmas. You can never have too many of the same record. Um, we've got some CDs as well for all of you keen gardeners, people with allotments. Um, we've got some t-shirts, we've got the Tony Wright Acoustic Tour t-shirts. We've got some badges! We've got some badges. badges. That one says Save Millie Evans. She made it herself. She, she made it herself. She didn't buy that one, she? Um, oh, that's what we're going to do. Does anybody here speak Spanish? Yes. Yes. So nobody does, do they? So that's good. That's good for me, because I do speak Spanish now. la maldición del cuerpo. It's 
of Sierra Sunrise, Margarita, breaks your heart in the desert heater, tells you your first name, tells you you're sober, sober, it's all over, over, tells you your mind, it's a tequila, song about summer. That song's about tequila. <laughs> and the effects of tequila. Where's the maracas? Leave his maracas. Yeah, yeah, I can't play maracas and I'm, I'm pretending I'm playing guitar at the same time. I'm going to play you two songs now that are typical Bradford songs, I'd say. Hey. Yeah, i would taken you from Bradford, yeah. I tell you, I've noticed things that are stopping. Things that we're missing in life. And I noticed this when I were in Bradford, because we're growing up in Bradford, you used to always hear this like this noise that would go, in the mood, like that. And it was the local paper sellers. Their challenge was to stand on the corner shouting the weirdest word that was nothing like telegraph and Argus if they could without getting arrested. And they've stopped. They've disappeared, they've just gone. We haven't, you know, we took them for granted and now they've gone. And that's quite sad. I have to do it myself now when I'm in Bradford. Some people know what I mean. Eddie Reid. Eddie Reid. <laughs> in fact, some people I think were shouting, Eddie Reid. <laughs> and Angus. <laughs> Eddie Weed or Eddie Reid. Eddie Weed. Probably that as well. Um, so that's gone. And I'll tell you what else, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's like kind of, oh, when did that go? You know, phone calls with every breathing. <laughs> when was the last time you had one of them? They just don't happen anymore, do they? I had loads in Covid, people ring you up going, I've <laughs> <laughs> right. got Covid. <laughs> that's well sick, man. But yeah, it's true, isn't it? And it, when they're gone, 
Yeah. Too late. They're gone, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure there'll be an app or something where you can just get it to do it anyway. Get your own phone to ring you and do your own breathing. Get your own Eddie Reed. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Reed. Um, still gambling. You want to do that? I want to do both. There's one or other when you when you put a slap. That can mean as well as. Um, do you want us to play one of these songs or both? All right, well, the first one's about a guy in Bradford who suddenly re realises that he's at the gates of heaven and St. Peter stood there and he stood on a cloud and St. Peter says to him, Welcome. So, the, you know, and, all that. and he's like, What are you on about, welcome? I'm not, it's staying here. Do you know what I mean? I've still got half a pint in that glass. It's about Eddie Reed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very Bradford, isn't it? And he's still got half, and so he refuses to go through the gates of heaven until they let him come back to finish his half. Um, and I think it is a very Bradford thing, that. And then once you're back, got to catch you again, haven't you? Once you're back, you're back. They get you with a deep clip, so it would have fallen box. Mortality, I wouldn't know what to ask. Is there something I'm supposed to do with this life, and how long will this body last? That's what I'd ask, or something like that. If I ever met my maker, well, I wouldn't know what to do. Stop for a selfie and get a signed picture for my friends too. That's what I do. You've been lying. If you did say you do the same too. I'll wait to give it all I've got. I'll wait and try my best. Give it up a shot and screw. This next one is actually, it's a true story that I, that I read, well, I looked at the pictures. <laughs> in the TNA. and um, And it was just, basically, back in the day I used to have this poster in my shed, but it was of this really old bloke from the middle pages of the Telegraph and Argus, that's how old it was, they were on both sides of the middle pages. And it got to 100 years old, right, and the, um, the 
Queen, it's, look at that's what we used to have a Queen. <laughs> she wrote to him to say congratulations, and uh, she wrote to him, and so it was in the paper being interviewed, like, do you remember Queen Victoria? And he's like, yeah, cause back, this is a few years ago. He's like, yeah, I do. He says, do you remember like seeing first cars and roads in Bradford? He's like, yeah. And do you remember like the First World War and the Second World War and England winning the World Cup and when they pretended that they landed on the moon and all that. <laughs> and uh, anyway, done all these things. And then right at the end of the interview, the, the journalist just said to him, what do you put your longevity down to? And he just went, easy. Since I was nine, I've smoked 40 a day and drink half a bottle of scotch. <laughs> and I just thought, brilliant, he's pickled himself, he's been dead for years, but he's pickled, right? And he doesn't know he's dead, so he's just carrying on. <laughs> right? But I just thought, that's brilliant. And again, this is, this is a Bradford thing. So, um, I wrote a song about him. And then I added a bit because I thought, you know, the more debauched he gets, the, the longer he lives. So there's some bits that aren't true. <laughs> I can't remember how it goes. <laughs> it's called Gamble, Drink and Smoke.
since I was a lad I wouldn't say it was a happy life In fact, most of the time I was sad But it's the only life I've known Cos it's the only life I've had Stories of dying in Bradford, two of them on trot. Here we're now to build it up, coming to Christmas, don't we? Coming into Christmas, let's sing songs about dying in Bradford. Yeah. Right, this one isn't actually about dying in Bradford. This is about getting murdered in Bradford. <laughs>
<laughs> BFG. <laughs> What's BFG? What's BFG? Oh, Bradford. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking hell, you loser. <laughs> you know what? I was thinking earlier, I was thinking about getting all bands from Bradford to get together and then just put like BD and add all the postcodes together so it'd be like BD 12006. It'd be good, wouldn't it? But because you called me a loser, I'm not going to ask you now. <laughs> all the bands in Bradford, bar one. Bad boy chiller crew. Bad boy chiller crew? Oh, fuck yeah. Well. Oh, all right then. To get the kids going. Yeah. yeah. So all you have to shout out is like BD, what were it, BD3, whatever you did. He's got BD3 to all these gangsters, right? And then he got so excited one day, he shouted out his full postcode and that's going to move. <laughs> Shall we have a sing along? Do we mind any swearing? Coming up to Christmas, I'm, I'm going to get swear. That's all I want is a new swear word. Um, this is a song actually, it's, it's a song I'm quite proud of. It's a television song and it was written back in the last millennium. That's like a thousand years ago. Which technically means that because it's a thousand years old, it's a folk song. So you can't sing along to it. Everyone can sing it, yeah. And it's for a... Uh, it's actually used to get the kids before they move into like primary school from nursery. It's, it's used to get them used to swearing before they move up to school. And it's quite successful. If you come to Bradford, close your eyes in town centre, hold your wallet, and listen, listen and you'll be able to hear the, the fruits of our uh, input into Bradford's youth. Are you playing? Even though it were written a thousand years ago, it's still pertinent today. And I don't even know what pertinent means. <laughs> it sounds right though, doesn't it? <laughs> There's a party over here. There's a party over here. There's a party over here. Just don't care, it's all Friends and 
So it's party over here. There's a party over here. There's a party over here. Just don't care. It's alright now, now, now. I just don't care. Would you die for king or queen? No. No. How times have changed in the past thousand years. Yeah. But I don't blame you, right? Because why would you? When you've got friends. Friends. Yeah. And we've all got a million. Everywhere. Throw my beard. No one, no one is being there. I can throw my beard. It's a very gifted skill. I've got a. I know a bloke, right? I, I quite like building stuff. I quite like building stuff. I don't know why, but I do. I like building stuff. Anyway, there's this bloke in Keithley who I get stone off called Distant Steve. Does anyone know him? Does anyone. Stone. Stone. It's just up the Oakworth Road, it's called Distant Steve, I don't think he knows I call him Distant Steve, but everyone knows what I mean when I say it right. You know it's stony hard. And this bloke comes up and he goes, You alright there, how are you doing? <laughs> and he sounds like he's miles away shouting, <laughs> but he's right in front of him. <laughs> Distant Steve. But it's good for stone, I suppose I'm taking piss, but it's an advert. That's well good stone, it gets York stone flanked. Sandstone, grit stone. Yeah. And a little bit of stone. Yorkshire stone, ain't you? Could you say, yeah. Uh, that's gone up, hasn't it? Like it made else. Well, that's coal. Yorkshire stone. Yorkshire stone. Coal, that's bloody hell fire. Coal, that's bloody hell fire. Talking of throwing beards, my daughter went to see Santa this week. She says to me, he want real Santa. I said, what do you mean he want real Santa? She goes, because I'm talking to him and he's being kicked with for the <laughs> I think he's just one of those helper types. <laughs> he says that's what your Uncle Tony's beard does, he goes up like that. It's actually sliding down. He used to do my fringe. <laughs> anyway, Millie said this is his last song, so I want to get off. <laughs> his exact words were I bought a burger and it might be cold. <laughs> I like your shirt, Millie. I like your shirt too. Thank you, thank you. I don't know what this is, but I don't know if I knew it waxed it. There you go. Next time. It's not like end of a football match, we all swap the shirts. It's not that kind of party. You put me press on, it's very happy. Anyway, you can sing along to this song. It's quite simple. It's quite simple. I went to a bar and we put my car keys in both, spoiled the traffic for them or something. 
did laugh. It was part of the side <laughs> Uh, it's true as well. Um, right, so please feel free to sing along. It's just something I believe in. You should write about what you believe in. And I actually do believe that it takes all sorts of us to make the world go around and be a better, interesting place for it. So I wrote a song that says, It takes all sorts to make the world go around. And then I thought, What rhymes with around? I stood me out, so I just said the same line again. And because I went on the summit, I did it three times. Because it rang every time. So feel free to sing along with me in that bit.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for coming out. It's part of me and Millie and Jake and Chris and Root Rocks and the Root Village Hall. Thank you for my music. Um, but that was the one that Millie said, stop after this one time. And I said, but what if we get an encore? He went, well, I'll think about that when that happens, right? So, because he's a bit tetchy, I thought, I won't drag him all the way back to the dressing room, but I'll just have a word with him at that wall there. <laughs> if we get an encore, I'll get him to turn around and probably join in for a few. And if not, we'll just, I'll just make him face that wall and it's his own fault. <laughs> Thank you very much everybody, you've been amazing. We're talking about it. Thank you. You know, he often threatens to leave, right, and form his own. Millie Evans is Tony Wright. He can't pour a pint. Here, if he gets down my neck, he's going where he needs to go, so what's the matter? I like it better than this time. Oh, that's Sabbath Sabbath is it? That's Sabbath Is that more like a really bad Sabbath Four joke? Well, that's people with Jane, I've finished that last one. It's on the Anti album, but it very nearly wasn't on the Anti album. We were going to be left off because I only wrote one verse for it. Um, and Millie said to me, where's that song and why aren't we playing it? And I said, it's only got one verse. And he went, oh, I knew you sang the same words, but I thought you meant it differently in second verse. So I said, yeah, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I mean it different second verse. He says, everyone laughs at you first verse. He says, and then when you sing it second time, it's like they think, oh shit, he means it. Shit, 
Some say lonely and some say free I think it's cause I'm short and I've got big feet It's when I'm down on my luck Well there's no one there to give a damn about me When I'm down on the ground I'm being told to stay down
We've got a strict, strict curfew, haven't we? So this is our last song. We're going to play it twice as fast as you've ever heard it before. You can tell what it is, yeah? Uh, What's the matter? Alice, what's the matter? Something about you really puts me down. You're the life of the party, you're the toast of the town. Something about you really picks me up like a hot cup of coffee and a hot cup of coke. Well, it feels like a Saturday. Is it going? My name, it's a Sunday. I can see clearly while the rain is gone But it looks like someone's gonna drop the bomb Alice, what's the matter? Alice, what's the matter? Alice, what's the matter? Alice, what's the matter? Something about her, she reminds me of you Something about her, we could be me too Something about them, something about the hella Something got to tell you about my dad and your mother Well, it feels like a Saturday And he's going Like it is a Sunday I can see coming down the rain Thanks for everybody. See you. Have a great Christmas. Ta-da! Let's hear it one more time for Tony Ryan, Billy Ellen.